Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eight World, and today we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to fly CAS on Invader and X Tanoa. And the reason this is important to know is because Tanoa is a very different map from either Altus or Stratus, and the vehicles are going to be hiding a lot more in the forested areas. Now that's going to make it really hard to try and find out where they are, and it may lead to you getting shot down a lot more than you would in, say, an Altus server. So it's very important to be smart and strategic about how you approach the objectives. But if you follow it step by step and you do things very carefully and cautiously, then you should survive to fly another day. But anyway, let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do, we're going to pull up the map and just take a look at what we're dealing with. So as you can see, here is a standard sort of invade and annex uh, map. Now I should mention as well, this is actually a mission that I downloaded it and I'm actually running on my PC, but uh, normally this is set up on uh, multiplayer servers and there's going to be maybe up to 50 or 60 people uh, playing at any one time. So there's going to be helicopters going all over the place uh, and probably other CAS aircraft as well. So you, you probably won't have to do quite as much as, as we will in this video today. So the first thing you want to do, bearing all of that in mind, is, and just giving some credit to Knack, who were the guys who uh, made this particular Tanoa version of Invader and X. Um, you want to check out the TeamSpeak address. Uh, and usually it's, as you can see, usually it's as a marker on somewhere on the map. It's very important that you join the TeamSpeak server if the server admins want you to. Um, and that's really important because uh, when there are other aircraft flying around and sort of taxiing around the airbase, especially in the night time, you want to make sure that you're talking to them so that you don't run into them. Some of these aircraft have like a 15 minute respawn time. So it's very important that you don't destroy aircraft unnecessarily by um, trying to take off at the same time as someone else. Uh, okay, step two, uh, let's take a look at the AO. Here we go over here, way over here. So our mission basically is going to be to take out pretty much as, as many of the vehicles as we can in this red circle. The radio tower here is also pretty important for us because uh, while it's up, enemy CAS aircraft can spawn. So um, we're not going to be basically able to take that out in this particular playthrough. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with um, enemy aircraft. It's very important that you check to see if that's up before you start flying out. You have to be aware if you're going to be, you know, expecting enemy aircraft to chase you down. Okay. So step three, let's quickly take a look at the aircraft we have available. Sometimes you only have the wipeout available. Sometimes you have the near front as well. Uh, and you might be thinking, let's just go for the wipeout, right? Because look at all those weapons. Look at all those bombs. That's awesome, right? Well, not really, because uh, we're going to be hitting the aircraft for the very first time. No one else has been there yet. So... We need something fast, something agile, something that can take out the enemy CAS aircraft. Don't have quite as much stuff to, to uh, knock out targets, but it's very important that we take this one out first. If we die, we'll come back in the, uh, the wipeout. All right, so let's get in the cockpit. While we're doing that, I'll just bring the map up again. Step four, I think we're up to, is, I don't wanna take off yet. Uh, let's have a look at some of the markers on the airfield. And as you can see, there's one down here that says, jet and VTOL re, re um, and repair. And this is pretty important because uh, that's only for when you actually want to rearm. You don't want to uh, fly across that, or, or should I say taxi across that, uh, before you're ready to actually rearm. Because it takes about five minutes for the rearm process to uh, happen. And in the meantime, you can't actually fly the aircraft. So always check that out first before you take off and figure out a, you know, a proper sort of like taxi path for you to take. Um, let me see if I can just draw a quick line. We're gonna go down here. Now obviously if it was a multiplayer server, you wouldn't wanna be drawing lines all over the map, but basically this is the path that we're gonna take all the way and take off down that way. All right, cool. So I think that pretty much wraps up uh, most of the the sort of the pre-flight pre checklist. So, um, so let's just start taxiing out. Now it's also very important to make sure that you don't go too fast because as you can see there's a lot of friendly vehicles just sitting there waiting to be uh, used and the neophron has a, a tendency to sort of get away from you and, and once you get over about sort of 50 kilometers an hour it doesn't really respond 
um, to your rudder pedal. So, you know, more than once when I was learning to fly, I crashed into um, friendly aircraft actually at the airstrip, so. All right, so we're coming down our taxi lane now. And I should mention as well, the frame rate at the moment is pretty bad, and that's because, um, probably because number one, I'm running it on my PC and not on a dedicated server. And also number two, um, there's so many vehicles like, just that aren't being used at the moment and they just eat into your um, CPU. All right, cool, so we're ready to take off. Just make sure everything's good. We want to make sure that we have a waypoint marker on top of the objective because uh, if we have to actually shoot down the CAS aircraft, we don't want to sort of get lured over the objective because there's going to be lots and lots of AA. So let's take off. Now, by the way, I should mention as well that I do have uh, a controller that I'm using to fly right now. I am going to be switching back and forth between the controller and the mouse and keyboard just periodically when I need to uh, do things with a map and that sort of thing. And all of my important controls are actually mapped to the controller button. So I have I have the gear, I have countermeasures, that's the most important one. I have push to talk, you can see that in the uh, left hand side now. I also have uh, third person, I also have the map, and uh, the most important one I think as well, apart from countermeasures, is um, I have cycle through next vehicle target as a controller button. All right, cool. So we can't see enemy any enemy aircraft yet. So uh, we might just try and take a pass and switch over to the air to ground missiles. And I'm up about 1,100 meters. That's about right. And when we get closer to the objective, probably about three k's out, we're going to start to see some things on the radar up the top. Uh, if you're invading the next server, actually has radar, I should say. Sometimes it doesn't even have radar and you have to, you know, turn it on by the fob or something, so. But if you do have radar at about three k's out, you are gonna start to see some vehicles. You don't wanna get any closer than that. What we're gonna do, and you'll see me do it, I'm gonna sort of cycle through the targets and I'm looking for the tanks. In particular, I'm looking for the Tigresses because they're the enemy AA. And we need to try and take out, there we go. We've got a lock already. There we go, there's one, firing a missile and veering off. Don't want to get too close. Just knock out the Tigresses one by one. There we go. Just flares out. Another missile. There's another missile. It's like launching all of its missiles at me. Alright, so... We actually didn't take any damage, but there was more than one Tiger... Oh, there we go. We took a little bit of damage. There was actually more than one Tigress by the looks of it in the sort of close proximity to each other. Oh, there is an enemy jet as well. That could have something to do with it. Let's quickly like veer around. We have no flares left now, unfortunately. So this jet, jet gets one more lock on us. We're probably gonna die. Just sort of trying to get a, an angle on this jet. It does take quite a few hits to actually kill um, a jet with uh, a lock-on missile. So, you know, if you do get hit by the Tigress, it's not really a big deal. You can survive. That being said, I don't have any flares left, so... Just gonna try and come in a bit closer to this buzzard. There we go. That's my missiles gone. Most of the time, the missiles don't actually like take it out. You have to go to guns. Might be a bit too far out for guns at the moment, actually. There we go. Okay, so that's the. AA jet gone, but it will be back. So we have to sort of, as quickly as we can, take out as many of these vehicles because as soon as it comes back, it's gonna launch missiles and we have no flares left. So what I might try and do is I might just do a quick pass and uh, go back to land and then um, come back with the wipeout. out. 
So we got one Tigress, I'm pretty sure. 5Ks out. Tank. Tigress. Another Tigress. Please don't shoot us down. I think we might have got him. All right, so that's pretty good. We've got one more uh, missile. So by my count, we've killed three Tigresses by the looks of it. Kuma, Mora, see, I'm just cycling through. I don't care about any of this other stuff. I just care about the Tigress. All right, we are getting like shot by something, but I don't think it's a Tigress. Just looking at the map. No, it looks like all just light vehicles at the moment. All right, we might just sort of fire off one more missile and then uh, we don't want to wreck the jet, so we'll come back in something a bit heavier. There we go, we'll take out the more. As you can see, I'm pretty safe to, to get a bit lower now because the Tigresses are gone. BTRs are another thing that's really important to knock out as well, but for the most part, all of that stuff with just machine guns won't really do much damage to you. <laughs> all right, so I'll cut the video here and we'll come back in the wipeout. Okay, so we're back and you'll notice that the wipeout flies a lot slower. And we're only going about maybe 300 Ks an hour right now. And that's why you definitely want to take the near front if you have the option first, just to knock out that AA plane first. It probably will respawn, but uh, hopefully by that point we've knocked out most of the uh, threats in the AO and we can just sort of try and shoot it down, uh, considering we'll have a bit more time. All right, so got a lot more vehic uh, sorry, a lot more uh, ammo, I should say. Just taking out the heavy targets first, so the Coom is definitely a heavy target. Not too worried about the Afrites, I'm just sort of cycling through them. So their Coom is gone. Just veer off. It looks like there's a tack heli. Yeah, it's a cashman. So that's a pretty like, that can be pretty, um, you know, sort of problematic if it's, uh, like if it gets a, a lock on you. So I might just come in and we'll destroy that with guns. There we go. Doesn't take much to knock out the cashman. One, one burst basically of um, 30 mil and it's gone. Where's that side mission? I'm just seeing other targets now. Yeah, so the side mission's off to our left. I just have to make sure that we don't go too far over there because there might be Tigresses over there as well. Okay, so we're just still cycling through for heavy targets and then the rest we'll just take out with guns. Gorgon's down. All right, what else we got? Pretty sure by the looks of it, it's just like, yeah, two of Freets like on top of each other. Might even like, cause they sort of seem like they're stationary. I might even come and try and bomb them. Get two in one, one go. Well, okay, so we got another CAS aircraft by the looks of it. So I'll just switch over to my Falchions. Hopefully it's a buzzard. Because then we can deal with it nice. Yeah, that's good. The Neophrons are much harder to catch. I don't think I got it. Might have damaged it. See how we go. The wipeout's not very good at dogfighting. <laughs> Still, oh, it's sort of in a turn, so we might be able to catch up to it. I'm going pretty fast right now. Too far out to hit it with guns right now, I think. Yep. Getting close up. There we go. Get wrecked. All right, 
as you can see, my view distance is fairly low. I'm trying to keep the frames up for you guys, but uh, as we get closer to the ground, you can sort of see everything you need to see. All right, uh, I'm just going to check on the map, see if those... Um, I don't know if those uh, vehicles are still there. We'll be able to lock on in just a tick. 3Ks out. Still can't see anything. Still can't see anything. Yeah, they're still there. Okay, I'm going to drop a bomb on them. Now, these bombs are laser-guided as well. So... Just bear that in mind. So as you can see, I just hit them pretty, pretty easily, just uh, manually fired. Uh, but yeah, if you laser guide them, you can pretty much pinpoint hit anything you want. So anyway, I think that's all the vehicles in the main AO gone. All right, so we've still got like a big group of infantry here. Uh, and it's at this point too when all the vehicles are gone and you've still got bombs on the racks that you might just want to come in and just ask your teammates to um, let you know if they want you to bomb anything. Get them to laze targets or whatever. I know there's a big clump of infantry there, so these bombs are pretty damn devastating when they hit, so. Yeah, infantry's gone. <laughs> So we might just quickly come over the side mission because we've got some uh, missiles left on the racks. Take out them as well. And then our job is done. So there's an Afrit uh, unknown vehicle. It's a car. It looks like just light stuff on the side mission. Might just gun run them to show you what that looks like. Now it's important when you're doing a gun run on an Afrit, uh, that, um, or a Madrid or something like that, that you actually finish it off. Sometimes you'll just knock out the, um, the wheels and the crew will eject. So just fire enough rounds to actually make it explode like that. And then that way it'll uh, kill the crew and then the infantry don't have to like deal with the crew as well. Still like two more Afrits on that objective. Sometimes there's like AA and everything on the side mission. It's an off-road. Oh, that's going to be an easy kill. Obje objective destroyed. <laughs> wow. Clearly that was probably the objective or it was, I think it was right next to it. Oh, that's all right. The purpose of uh, this particular demonstration is not to show you how to complete side missions. It's to show you how to kill vehicles. So. One more Afrit. Get this guy. We might even do this with uh, Shriekers. So rockets are even easier. One more vehicle. So that was a HE rocket. There's also armor-piercing rockets as well, but HE is like more than enough to kill soft-skinned vehicles. Where is he? There he is. That's a truck. I think that's the objective truck. I'll kill it anyway. As you can see, one one rocket. Oh no, it didn't even didn't even connect. Or did it? Yeah, I think it did. No, oh, still there. One more pass. Overkill. Oh man, handles. Oh, they they ejected. We'll bomb it anyway. Just be aware though, don't bomb too low to the ground because you can actually damage yourself with your own bomb, so. But anyway guys, that's how it's done. That's how you fly Cass on Tanoa. Uh, so hopefully you learned something. Uh, so yeah. But anyway guys, that just about wraps up this video. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, if you like what you see, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Also check out the links in the description below if you want to see any more of my videos or if you want to support this channel on Patreon. And until next time, see you later, and have a good one.